Hey guys, and welcome to another video in this artificial intelligence tutorial. And in this video, we're we're going to talk about fuzzy logic and control inside of artificial intelligence. And first of all, we're just going to do a, a short recap from the last video where we talked about like just introduction to um, artificial intelligence, and I showed you an example of an eBay classifier where we like created our model and uh, with some different kind of functions and and um, and methods, and then we tr we trained our model and did some. Um, predictions on data the model hasn't seen before. So from the last video, we also talked about like we have this, these three kind of like um, learning, uh, learning where we have the first one here, supervised learning, where the, uh, where we know like the the, the output and input we give to the we give to the model. So let's say for example, um, if we give it, uh, our model a a, an, a an image of a dog, then it knows it's it's a dog, so we can like categorize. Um, Categorize the outputs as, as well. So we like just train our model to to see is this a cat or a dog Where if we go down here to the supervised learning unsupervised learning It doesn't like know what input uh, it is given the model So it's more like it's it's tr it tries to find some some pattern in the data that it, that it's given So if you look over to right here, we can see like um like a graph here where like all the points, like all the predict data is like in, in different kind of clusters, which which we're calling like clustering. So it's more like we we're trying to find some some clusters or some patterns in the or in the in the data set that the model uh, was given. And then we also have the, the re an introduction to like reinforcement learning, where we have an, an agent that is operating um in an environment, and then it gets it gets like some some rewards for for different kind of actions that that it takes so we, we, it's giving some kind of input um, from the state and then from that state it gives some um, mm. some like act it takes some action um, from like the inputs that the reinforcement agent is, is given and then it gets rewards for for like how good it has performed by doing that action in in the environment so to go back to this video we're talking about like uh, fuzzy logic and, and control. So let's start with a control example here where we have um, a car driving and then it is like um, measuring the distance to the car in front of it and then if it, if it comes closer to the car in front of it it will like slow down or like hit the brake. So in this case here we can see like the green car is going up to the orange car here and if it's under five meters um, to the, to the uh, orange car here it will just like break 100% so we'll just um, stand on the on the brake and break 100% if we're between 10 and, and uh, 5 and 10 meters to the car in front of us we're just we're only hitting the brake with uh, 75% and then we just keep doing the same in, in smaller steps until we're like more than 20 meters away from the from the car in front of us and then we then we don't break so if we want to control uh, implement this kind of controller in in our code, we can just do it with an uh, like an, a switch statement or um, a state machine where we where we are in different kind of states. So this is called like a crisp discrimination between sets because we have like um, some rules or that is set up, and if something uh, if something is true, then then do something else. So in this case, if we just implemented the uh, the rules we set up here. So if the distance is less than five, we just apply the break like hundred. We apply the we apply hundred to the break. And then we just keep doing the same here with the other with other states that it could be in. But the problem with this is that it is like it is either like apply the break 100% or apply the break um, 50, uh, 75%. So it's more like a crisp discrimination between the sets. So it's it's either one of them, where where like in fuzzy logic, which we're going to talk about in in um, in later in this video, it's it's more like it can be like. Um, some of some of both, so it's, it can be like it should break like 75%, but also like 100%. So it's not like crisp, so it's not like either one of them, like so it's not like a Boolean logic where you have a true or false, but more like you can have some some more steps between those those rules that you set up. So the control example here is just like how can we like do it more like continuous instead of these uh, discrete crisp sets that we're just dividing in so we could actually just uh, make more steps so instead of like having five to ten meters here we could have like five to six meters but it will still be crisp set even though we just divide it into like smaller rules or like smaller states down here so the solution to this is that not everything is boolean logic where like boolean logic is either a, 
a zero or a one. And if we want to like apply some control system, it's not really like it's not good and it won't be continuous. So if you're, for example, in a car and you just if you're in five meters to the car uh, to the car in front of you, you'll just step on a brake and it will not be a, like ideal or like an optimal way to drive. So if you're five meters, then 75 percent I apply 75 percent of the brake. And if you're like just going one meter behind, you only apply like 50 percent of the brake. So it's not really like. Everything is not Boolean logic, and especially when when we're talking about like reality or uh, just like stuff like that. So an example here is also like temperature when we want to like um, divide something into temperature. So uh, it can it can either be like very cold, cold, warm, or very hot. Or let's say like for example here we have the small, medium, and tall. And on the picture here we have a person that is either small, medium, or tall. And then let's say for example we had a person here in the middle. So with Boolean logic, we can't really say that this person in the middle here is like medium small or small medium. So it will, if we use Boolean logic for this, it can either be like this person is either small or medium. But when we're using fuzzy logic, it, we can actually say that, that this person in the middle here, like um, a step between uh, our, our rules, it can also like be a, a small medium step. So we just like kind of divide our, our program into smaller and more like continuous steps. So it's, uh, it takes us further here to like fuzzy logic and the introduction to fuzzy logic. We're also going to talk about uh, for fuzzy logic more in depth in, in the next video where we're going to like um, talk about like the fuzzy logic controller and how each element in the, in the fuzzy controller works. So this is just more to like compare like we are normally used to, to, to Boolean logic where it can either be like uh, false or true. So in this case here we say that is the temperature hot? And we can either say like yes, it's hot, or no, it's not hot. But with fuzzy logic, we can ask the same question here again: um, Is the temperature hot? And then we can say like yes, it is. It is hundred percent hot, or we can say like it is not. Oh, it's only like uh, fifty percent hot, or or it's it's cold. So we divide them into like smaller steps. And if we go to the next slide here, we can see that we define fuzzy logic with a, a membership degree or a membership function. So like for a crisp set here for Boolean logic, we have we have either like only one, zero or or one, where where in fuzzy logic we have something called a, a membership function for our set. So our, uh, it's um, this is our um, membership function here for the fuzzy set A, where this is the membership degree. So the membership degree is like it's not one or zero; it's it's a number between zero and one. So it's like smallest steps between those those two numbers instead of just one of them, and and the, and and this correlates to to the graph over here where we have like the degree of membership up here on the on the y-axis, and then we can see like the red graph here, like the red red graph here is the crisp set uh, crisp set uh, indicator function where if we go on here on a, on an x-axis we can see that if something uh, occurs then it is it is either one or zero. Where if we have like our, our membership function here for a fuzzy set, we can have like um, actually we can have arbitrary like forms of, of graphs and lines and stuff like that if we want to. We can also have like have, have triangles or some other different kind of functions or polynomials or, or stuff like that. But in this case here, we just have like this uh, Gaussian uh, Gaussian um, graph representation here, um, where we have like where we have like um, our degrees of membership like they're increasing here. For example, if we had um, uh, the like the cold here, and we will say like here it's it's very cold, but then we are like we are like um, going towards a very cold uh, like cold here. So we can have like if, if if it was the same as the persons we just talked about, where we have like um, small here and then medium here, then we can have like small medium here, which indicates up the de uh, degree of membership, like let's say. Uh, 0.5 would will indicate like a small medium person where if you have a, like a, a crisp set function it could either be like a small or or medium so this is to, to compare like fuzzy and boolean logic where on the left here we can say that if we go back to our car example again here where we in the, uh, where we like divided our problem or our control uh, problem into into these steps here and we tried to to draw um, a membership function um, 
like a graph over here where we have the degree of membership up here we can either be like extremely close very close medium close little close or like the distance can be okay and we don't need to apply the break and then we have our, our meters here down on the x-axis where if we use um, fuzzy logic instead of boolean and logic for this control problem we can see like with these triangles over here we can then have our our um, our fuzzy logic function um, like these triangles here where we can say like we go from extremely close and then it's, it gets less and less and less extremely close until we hit like five meters and then it gets more like very very close but not very close because it will only be 100% uh, very close when when we add the uh, degree of membership here at, at one so and then again it will be m less and less and less uh, close to very close and then like closer to medium close oh, I just switch so this is like more to into like divide our, our, our like control problem into smaller tasks and then we don't we don't only have it can either be false or true but we can have like for example it's, it's 20% it's here it's let's say it's it's 15 50 50 percent extremely close and 50 percent very close and then we go over here and then we say like now it's 60 percent very close and only 40 percent extremely close so we have like some some um some steps in between our our like crisp steps with with fuzzy logic so when we're when we're using our fuzzy logic, we often use it like as a, as a we can use them as a, as a fuzzy logic controller where we're going to like um, like for example in the in the example we had with the cars, we're going to implement a controller that can that can break when we're like when we're going like towards another car in front of us. And then inside of our fuzzy controller here, first of all, we have a, a reference input that comes into our controller, and in this case, it could for, be for example like um, the sensor. Uh, the sensor values for, uh, for measuring the distance to the car in front of us and then when we get that distance here we fuzzy uh, we use the fuzzication here to like um, to like get from a crisp set because it will be a crisp uh, crisp input here we get uh, into our fuzz controller and then with our fuzzification here we we like we convert that that crisp input to a to a fuzzy input so as i said up here first we're mapping the crisp input to a fuzzy input and then we have like some inference mechanism here that is like rule matching. So for a fuzzy control, we have to set up some rules um, as like, for, let's say like very close, close, uh, far away and distance is okay and stuff like that. So, and then we have the rule base here that is um, inferring with like, like the, the rule base here is where we, where we like set up our rules and then in our inference is where we match those rules to the fuzzy, uh, fuzzy input we get here from uh, our crisp set and then when everything is done and we have matched the rules we have set up we can go back again and defuzzificate um, our output uh, from the controller here because when we need to apply our, our input to the process here or to the car when we have to hit the brake then we need uh, a crisp output again so in the defuzzification here we have to like get our fuzzy inputs to crisp outputs again and then we can apply that crisp output to uh, to our break or another process that we want to control and then we feed back that output here again to our fuzzy controller um, for for like the next calculation so we'll calculate some 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 kind of error and then use that that error in in, in terms of like the inputs uh, and outputs for our, our fuzzy logic controller so on the last slide here i'm just going to get uh, go over like um, some some different kind of applications that we can use uh, fuzzy logic for because it's a very used it's a very used uh, concept inside like a con uh, control engineering and stuff like that because it is it is kind of it is kind of easy to set up and in the in the next video we're going to talk more about like how how these um, fuzzy controller um, different kind of elements inside the fuzzy controller like how they work and how we can go from a crisp input to a fuzzy input and then um, do some calculations and stuff like that inside and then and then defuzzificate our crisp input, uh, crisp output again to uh, like a fuzzy in output again to uh, a crisp output that we then can apply to to our process. So we're going to talk about that in the next video. But here, here are some different kind of examples um, where we can use fuzzy logic. And in, for example, in aerospace, we can use fuzzy logic con to control like the altitude of the spacecraft which is like kind of the same as we did with the with the brakes here to to the car in front of us 
and we can also use it in automotive uh, applications for speed control automatic transmission like when you're shifting shifting gears and stuff like that so we don't really like just want to be like either in did that gear or in this gear and and stuff like that so we want to have those like more smooth and continuous um, transmissions between the, the gears but also like for for traffic uh, control it's also uh, pretty used in for let's say like in, in in pattern recognition if we have some kind of super unvi unsupervised um, problem that we want to that we want to like get something out of and we want to try train our model to to learn patterns in in the data so it, it is it is used for some like handwriting recognition problems and also like speech and recognition and image search so we're going to talk about more of that in in the um, in, in later videos as well when we do want to use um, reinforcement learning and going more in depth with that but it is also used for a lot more that you can look up on the internet so it's a very used controller and and like it's a, it's a very practical controller because let's say with for example like P, uh, PIDs or like the more um, it, like the classic controllers we have they are not really easy to implement in in uh, in practice like for example with our fuzzy logic controllers where where like th those they're really um, um, easy to implement in code and we're also going to do that in later videos where there's a library for for C++ that we can just uh, use for creating our fuzzy logic controller and then use it for for some practical problem then that we set up so that's it for this video guys remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video if you enjoyed the content and you want more of it in the future currently i'm also doing um, a computer vision tutorial and also a uh, algorithm and data structure tutorials so if you're interested in that you can go check them out out I'll, I'll link to one of them up here and then if you if you want to you can go check them out or else i'll just see you in the next video guys bye for now